Welcome back to another mini review. Today we're looking at the ABF 802 soldering iron. This is a pretty popular unit. It's on eBay, Amazon, and retails for around 10 to 14 dollars US, depending where you are and what time of the year it is. But that being said, it is an inexpensive adjustable temperature soldering iron. And by adjustable temperature, that is a really nice feature. What that does is it actually gives you control, finite control, over the amount of heat coming from the tip of the iron. That can be important, especially if you're dealing with uh, microprocessors or finite PCB work. You definitely want to have a little bit more control about the amount of heat coming from the end of your iron. In today's review, we're going to take this guy apart. We're going to take a look at the effectiveness of this rheostat. And at the same time, we're going to put it up against Another very popular iron. This is just basically an OEM version. It's everywhere these days. And we'll uh, take a look at the two together in terms of the actual accuracy and sustainability of these temperatures. Now with this particular unit, it ships only with the soldering station stand. It did not ship with any additional tips or um, anything else for that matter. Most of the soldering irons available today kind of look and feel the same. Here is a uh, Heiko style that goes into a actual soldering station, whereas the uh, two we're looking at today, as you can tell, pretty well identical. The only difference is, is that these ones do not go into a soldering station, they plug directly into your line. And another variation on the theme as well in terms of variable temperature control is something along the lines of this TQ95. This is a pretty cool soldering iron made in Japan from Goot. And instead of that variable temperature control, you actually have a push button control right here, giving you that increased temperature flow. But hey, that's another review altogether. Today we're going to look at these two right here. So let's get started. Now the nice thing about control is the fact that on any given day, you really don't know what you're gonna be soldering. If it's something very small, or very minute, an SMD, PCB, it's good to have that temperature control so you don't burn out the components. Now, the only issue with these cheap soldering irons is the fact that even though they do ship with this variable temperature control, you never really know how accurate it really is. Is it really on that 400 degree range? Or is that what I'm looking at, but in reality, we're throwing out, you know, 800 degrees. You gotta check it, we gotta verify it. So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna take a couple of popular sardine irons and we are gonna do a quick little tear down and then we're gonna put them to the test, put them on a couple of thermometers and just see if that variable temperature control is actually giving us a true reading. Now the first thing to point out is none of these soldering irons are grounded. There's no third prong on the plug. Now grounding can be important if you're doing really finite SMD work and you want to be 100% proof positive that you're not going to fry a component, then chances are you want to be working with a grounded soldering iron or soldering station. For general electronics work and even low level PCB, most of the time it's really not mission critical, so that grounding is really not that necessary. But uh, for the sake of the argument, yeah, I will point out that neither of these irons are grounded. Now, if we take it apart, we'll just unscrew it here, and they're all, all the OEMs, they're all the same in terms of the mechanics. Take off the top part of the housing, and here we have the element, filament, and here is the rheostat or the temperature control. Now all these irons are slightly different. This one has the temperature control in Celsius. So it starts at the 200 degrees Celsius range to a maximum of 450 degrees Celsius. On the other hand, the 802 iron here is in Fahrenheit, but um, so it's going from 380 to just over 600 degrees Fahrenheit. But at the end of the day, it works out to the exact same thing. So temperature wise, you're getting the exact same output, at least theoretically, whether it's in Celsius or Fahrenheit. 
Okay, so up close and personal, we have both of these soldering irons in all their naked glory. And as you can see, they're quite similar. Starting off at the bottom here, we have the temperature control, the rheostat, and they're pretty well the same. Now this one does have sort of a Phillips style um, insert for the actual plastic housing. The other one here is just your generic um, sort of hexagon shaped. Moving down the line, they both have LEDs. Um, this one here is sort of a typical full-fledged external LED, and this one here is more of an embedded um, SMD style. Moving down the line as well, here we have some resistors, and on the back, as you can tell, much the same. The principles are all the same. Functionality is all the same. They're both utilizing triacs. Now they are different types of triacs. And well, what is a triac you say? That's a good question. Simply in a nutshell, a triac is a device that can control current. Now the nice thing about triacs in particular is that they're bi-directional. So they can control that in both directions. That's why they're so popular in these types of devices because not only are they diminutive, but they're quite powerful for the sort of performance that you're getting out of them. Generally speaking, they're used in all sorts of um, AC power control apps. They are, have the ability to switch to high voltages and high levels of current on both parts of the alternating current waveform. So they're uh, very usable, very functional, very cool little semiconductors. Now all triacs are slightly different, um, but they do serve the same purpose. The one on the bottom, as you can see, is more of a um, SOT style package. Actually, this is an SOT428, I believe, is the, uh, the uh, SOT uh, package, and it's a BT136S triac. The one on the top is a um, Mac 97A6 bidirectional triac. Um, I believe they're both rated for around 600 volts. So slightly different look, but the exact same functionality. And finally to the end or the tip of the soldering iron itself, this is the heating element. This one is sheathed at the top, while this one seems to be sheathed at the bottom. But uh, once again, they are functionality wise identical. So what we're going to be looking at today specifically is just how good this temperature control mechanism really is. Are we getting that temperature control that we want or is it all bells and whistles? So we're going to take a look. So the first iron, we have it set to 300 degrees Celsius and we'll measure the temperature. The second iron, the 802, is also set to 300 degrees Celsius or as you can see on the dial, 572 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so we have some melting solder. So the soldering iron has been on for approximately nine minutes and it is just attaining that 300 degrees Celsius temperature. So make note, if you do get one of these cheapo soldering irons, it will take a while to get the temperature you want. But there we are, we're sitting at around 300 degrees Celsius and it seems to be fairly stable. So um, in that case, yes. It's working. Let's try the other iron. Alrighty, we try the 802 now. Same setting, 300 degrees Celsius or 572 degrees Fahrenheit. And once again, uh, no problems here. Slightly higher, around 315 degrees. But uh, yes, it's definitely able to attain that adjusted temperature. Next up, we've got the dial set to 450 degrees Celsius and we are gonna see just how accurate this soldering iron is at attaining that temperature. That is the maximum temperature that this iron is capable of. BT meter is showing us a reading around 504, 505 degrees Celsius, um, a good 50, 55 degrees higher than what you're expecting. So with the HACO, we're getting a temperature reading of 515 degrees Celsius. Second soldering iron is out. You can see the LED is illuminated and it is trying to reach that temperature of 872 degrees, I'm oh, sorry, 842 degrees Fahrenheit or 450 degrees Celsius. Let's see how accurate it is. 
pretty close according to the multimeter around 465 degrees Celsius so pretty well spot on according to the HACO around 460 degrees Celsius okay so we know that it can reach the temperature that we desire and the question is how good is it actually at soldering so let's find out so I've got a PCB from a multimeter and let's see here I'm not happy with the way that these wires are attached so start by removing the first one and that's no issue so you can see let's bring it up a little bit here really nice draw of heat no worries there and once again here looking so right away I can tell you just but utilizing this iron is that this silicon grip really makes a difference my um, fingers feel no heat whatsoever from the um, extrusion part of the, uh, the iron itself so even though it's set to the maximum right now it's at 450 degrees Celsius it doesn't feel like it it's very very cool to the touch so I really appreciate that here we got a uh, Samsung power board pulled from a uh, Samsung LCD TV. And I'm going to try taking out one of these capacitors right here. Alrighty, so looking at these two. And once again, I'm not using any desoldering braid, flux, what have you. And that is just coming out like butter, literally. So, uh, yeah. Um, the soldering iron definitely um, can do the job. Closing thoughts on the ABF 802 soldering iron. I really like it. This is a really nice, well-designed, simple, effective tool. And at the end of the day, that's all we're expecting. The ABF 802 has a really nice feel in the hand. It has that really nice rubberized silicon grip here. Um, it has very good accuracy in terms of the higher temperature settings and it just is an all-around good performer. One caveat is the fact that it does advertise itself as ESD safe being as it is not grounded I wouldn't put too much into those claims because it's hard to be ESD safe if you're not grounded. Now that being said still you're getting a lot of bang for the buck and it is quite accurate. Now you do have to realize that the temperature control thermostat is not in Celsius. It is in Fahrenheit. So that might be a problem if you're uh, European or even Canadian perhaps. But um, generally speaking, it's really no big deal. At the end of the day, you do the basic math and it all works out to the same thing anyway. Don't let that stop you from getting this soldering iron. This is a really nicely designed, well-made, comfortable and accurate device. On a scale of five stars, I'm getting the AD, ABF802 a solid four out of five stars. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. I appreciate it as always. I love viewer feedback. If you have questions, concerns, problems, no problem at all. That's what I'm here for. I love it when we can banter back and forth and it just puts fuel in the fire, so to speak. So don't be shy. If you have a comment or question about this iron, about a multimeter, whatever, I'm here. And as always, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and until the next time, keep on testing.